everybody. It's windy out there. We're staying safe. Uh, I know Bobby was getting blown around outside, putting the Master Gardener stuff on there, on the new kiosk. Did it work out, Bobby? Yes, it did work out since I had help. <laughs> did you have pictures? I want to see pictures. Can you share pictures with us here? Maybe like email them to me and I can share them. Yeah, I just have one picture. Hold on, I'll send it to you. All right, cool. Thanks. Hey, it's already 12 o'clock. Last night, it looks like Fred Whitford talked to you guys about pesticide safety. Fred, it, everyone, um, I know a lot of farmers love Fred Whitford. What'd you guys think about him? Gonna open a pay a, an email, and that I just emailed myself because Bobby was just working on the kiosk outside while she was getting blown away, and I want to show you it because you'll be the first people to see it. Besides me and Bobby and Amber, but the first master gardeners to see it. Who's just seen it? <laughs> Who saw it? Teresa Bobby. I sent a picture to her. Oh darn! So you'll be you'll be the second group of master gardener peeps. Um, there was a there was a grant that Nine Star gave to Mike McCauley. He's a master gardener, and he makes um, he does a lot of stuff with woodworking. And in fact, he shared it with me. Let me see. He made the kiosk. It kind of looks like a national park um, bulletin board. And he built it and he's been really excited about it. And uh, Bobby has been working on making a map of the gardens so people, if when they come visit, they can see all kinds of stuff that the master gardeners grow here in the demonstration gardens. And it looks really nice, really nice. Okay, I'm going to show you guys some stuff here. So like if you have other hobbies that might not be exactly, you know, growing plants, it still fits in the master gardener realm. I'm going to share, he made a, we had a little get together and he made a, um, he learned how to use PowerPoint. We we're I was teaching the master gardeners how to use PowerPoint and Google Slides. And he built this, he took his pictures. So this is him um, in a grain bin. This lady lives in up in Anderson. And these are the stairs that he made. And then he also made the ceiling with his woodworking. That would be hard, I feel like. And then he also uh, put the door in and just basically stained it. This was already a door that was pre-made, but, and I think the man who made, this is the man, this is Mike, and he's the one who put the door in, but the stained glass person, I don't know who that was. I mean, not stained glass, but leaded glass, but anyways, I think he's very proud of his woodworking, and he made the kiosk, so let me see if I still haven't got my picture, darn it. I sent it to me by email, but sometimes my phone needs to be offline to do it because I don't know if it's because I'm in a this concrete building or what but my phone doesn't like to work can everybody hear me everybody's so quiet I'm like talking to myself I was just listening to the soliloquy enjoying <laughs> it that's all <laughs> okay I was starting to feel like self-conscious I'm sorry I was trying I was trying to Fill the void till I got it from my to my email, but apparently it was too long of a void for me. So I guess I started feeling uncomfortable. 
Well, I was asking how everybody felt about um, Fred Whitford last night. Whit Whitford, yeah. He talks about pesticide stuff. I was saying that farmers really like him because of his down-to-earth nature. What did you guys think about him? No, it's not what I expected. Oh, really? Tell me about it. I don't know about everyone else, but I expected it to be similar to what we've been uh, given. And he was absolutely nothing like to me because he was chatty and I go, are you going to get to the point? And then I got to, he did get to the point. Education um, in a matter of two hours, whereas he showed a oh. lot of pictures of his yard and was very, um, he just shared a lot of like more personal anecdotes and uh, more background stories, basically telling you try other things before you spray on stuff and then use the easier stuff first and then go hardcore. But um, that's very what Jackie was saying too. It's, I think you guys kind of both, maybe it was my connection. Oh, I think you guys kind of, but Jackie, you were saying he kind of had a lot of stories too. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I was expecting him to be popping slides over and over and over and over and over <laughs> like everybody else has. And you're trying to soak it all in and all of a sudden you're in a one-on-one -on -one almost with the master gardener talking about the world from his point of view and I kept thinking this is very interesting and I enjoyed it overall but I was a shock at the beginning. Good and I like just like Corey said I really like all those anecdotes and how do you guys feel about that is it nice to kind of hear how they keep I mean it just makes more sense I feel like when there's stories well, like I said, at the beginning, I would have probably go, oh, my God, you know, and then at the end, I think I would rate him extremely high if they were asking for a rating. So it all worked out and I appreciated what he did and it made it come alive. Good. I'm so glad. Thank you, Bobby, for sending it. I don't know when my phone is, but of course it is because I need more character development. I'm not sure. I sent um, your work email, too. Maybe I got it. After the, oh, okay. Yeah, I got it at my worker email just now. Thank you so much. Um, I read a little meme that said, if I get more character development, I maybe start turning into a villain. It's a joke. It's a joke. All right, let's see here. Where is that thing? I have so many pictures in my picture place. Here it is. Okay, cool. I just have to twist it. All right, now I'm going to share this so you can see it. So Bobby was out here in the gusty winds putting, so this is the, it's basically a locust wood. And he did put some, I think, oil on it, some sort of some varnish. I'm not sure what he put on it, but locust will stay for a while. But it has, the nice kind of a graphic map with numbers and then they made little blurbs of each of the types of gardens and I remember when Elaine was on here she talked about the demonstration garden but Teresa Bowlby was the person who helped to work on this project she tried to get a grant for it but the grant was denied and then Mike said I'm just going to go to Nine Star and ask them for money and they totally gave him money so that was a blessing. It was about $450 to build this. Hey, Bobby, what's this one say? I don't know what this one is. Is this your events coming up? Um, that's your calendar of events, yes. That's cool. And what's this? That is uh, the history behind the Master Gardeners when we started. That's cool. Well, you did a great job, Bobby. And you even have a legend. It's really nice. And then Bobby also bought really cute push pins because somehow there was a random weird thumb push pin in there. Gwen says it looks very nice, Bobby. Thanks, Gwen. So um, Teresa is going to be here later. I'm glad you sent her a picture because I know she was excited about this being done. So thanks, Bobby, for all that hard work. All right, cool. How's everybody doing today? Everybody staying healthy, I hope. Good. Every, your children are all healthy, Corey? Everyone's good. Um, good. I did have a real quick question uh, yeah. about the soil. I have it already. I just haven't been able to swing by yet. But if you're not there, is there an after hours drop box or is there somewhere I can just just leave it on the front porch or front step? I, I just didn't know. 
Ah, there actually is a drop box. It actually says drop box, I think. Um, it may not be able to fit your soil. If it if it looks like it won't blow away, you can just put it close to the door. I'll put it in the corner it. underneath the drop box. So that would be good. What did it say, Bobby? What did you say, Bobby? I said put it on the ground underneath the drop box and I'll just pick it up in the morning. Yep, yep. And we close at four. So what is today? Um, Wednesday? I don't know if we have a meeting tonight. Let's see. There's been a lot of meetings. I here. think you wanted it by tomorrow. Um, so I have it all ready to go. I just haven't been able to swing by yet. Yeah. I'm not going to send them out till Monday. So as long as you get it, you can even drop it off on the weekend. You got oh, it. yeah. I should. We should have said that. Thank you, Bobby. So you can bring it. When are you going to send it on Monday, Bobby? Um, in the afternoon. Okay. Thank you. And also, um, just so you guys know, I I'm very clear because that's how I am. Um, you don't have to do this. And definitely if you don't do this, I'm not going to penalize you in any way. Um, and if you don't have time to do it right now, you can do it later and let us know and we'll give you the, the discount code so that you can get a discount, but you'll still have to just mail it in yourself. So, but no worries if you can't do it right now, it's still possible to do it in the future. And also you're not going to get penalized anyway for the class. So wanted to let you know about that. I wanted to tell you a story. Um, I think I told you about the gentleman who called and he was trying to get rid of ants and he used wasp and hornet spray, like a whole can of raid down in his uh, crawl space. I was just like, so worried about him, but you know, and so I said, yeah, you need to get something that's rated for ants and so he went to get it at the co-op but he didn't listen to them again he didn't read the label and he used it incorrectly he used it in his crawl space the thing he got because he only wanted a certain type of thing but they said it doesn't work inside you can't use it inside it's not labeled for inside so it's for outside it's granules for outside and he didn't want to listen at all Anyways, the tarot people told him, you need to take your pea gravel out of your crawl space. And I mean, I don't know, I, I, I'm out of it at this point, but my point is poor, the poor lady over at the co-alliance, he was kind of mean to her. And then um, she was like, Lace, can you just wa water it down and can it work then for ants in there? And I told her, listen, I'm not a lawyer, but I'll tell you this much. We have to look at the label. And once someone has gone off label use, you do not give them any more advice. It's off label period, because you can't say something additional to that. I'm sure you guys talked about this last night. Basically, always point back to the label and they then if they have questions, they go to the to the manufacturer of the product because you personally don't have the and I don't either. We don't have the expertise to say anything in addition to the label or in subtraction of the label we have to follow the label fully for everyone's protection including you know health and environment and for it to work so um she was wanting she wanted to give him more advice and I said no you just you don't give him more advice sorry and that sounds mean and that might happen to you guys in the future you always encourage them to read the label we're all adults we should be able to read and it's a contract under the law when you buy it that you're gonna follow the label, but never give any additional information to the label because that's not our, that's not our expertise and we can get in bad trouble. Um, I think I've shared that I've gotten sued before because you can just get sued. It's not hard to be sued. And you just wanna have your ducks in a row because when you go through a deposition, you have to have all your stuff that's discovered and you basically keep your stuff in a row and just know that you could always be sued. Sorry, I, I live like that now. And um, it's not really fun, but it's just how some people make a living. And that's okay. They, they do that. Um, but just you have to be careful to not give advice past a label. So there's my little tidbit. I hope he's okay. I feel bad for him. But, you know, there you go. I think a week or two ago, you give us... Uh might have been last week, I don't know, that there was a uh, canned answer for the laws around 
else. So now there's a canned answer around pesticides because I don't really intend can. to give, I don't, yeah, well, uh, probably not the best choice words. I don't intend to give anyone any advice. I've already <laughs> made my mind up to that. So I just need what I need to be nice about it to send them where they can get it. Is that that's exactly you can? I feel like that's exactly right, Jackie. I feel like that's, a, I mean, we're giving them the resources so they can find it themselves, but we're not going above and beyond what the label says. We're just saying, yeah, read the label. I got that's that. It. So if they want it, I'm either sending them to you or John Oryx. Is that right? Mostly me, probably. You. Don't. All yeah, right. Just me. But you can answer a lot of questions. Nope. 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 <laughs> not right now. Maybe well, yes. If you, if you feel uncomfortable, send them to me. Don't worry about that. But Not right now. I hear you. And you know what helps is if you send pictures with it and say, hey, I'll take pictures and let's talk to Lace. And if she doesn't know, we can talk to the experts at Purdue. Yep. There. Yep. I got my canned answer. Take That's good. They talk to Lace. She's yes. And to don't, be, don't be surprised. Actually, if you send them back. Don't send them back. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I won't send them back. But don't be surprised when people start asking questions. It is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. So don't be, don't yeah. be surprised about that. Okay. I'm not yeah. going to be surprised. I won't be prepared. Yes. You're pre be prepared. Good. Good. Hey, I have a, I have a question about that. Um, yeah. One as a pharmacist, I, I, I get questions all the time off label uses, or um, it's, it's absolutely amazing how people do not read their own prescription labels and follow directions. Um, and that's their own medications that they're ingesting or using. So I can only imagine if they don't follow things to actually save their lives or their health, how many actually read labels for all these different pesticides? There's all these other things. Um, I know I try to, because I'm a pharmacist, I like following directions and, and those kind of things, but I just feel like most people don't. They just kind of throw some stuff in there, rinse it around and go. Um, so I just wonder, like, how often do you find that that really does happen? Um, well, that's pretty much, I mean, you probably know this guys, if everyone followed the rules and everything, a lot of people wouldn't have jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like if everyone was doing what should be done to take care of themselves, you know, we wouldn't have accidents. You know what I mean? So it's kind of hard, but like, for instance, there was a lady who just shared about glyphosate and how people, um, come down with like it, injuries or issues and so many times it's because they're not using their personal protective equipment. Um, so if it gets on your skin, it's going to get into your bloodstream. And there, there's a reason why they tell you to wear long sleeves and gloves and, sh you know, sh shoes that cover your toes. It's not just glyphosate. That, that's a pretty innocuous one. It's pretty not even hurting people. But um the reason why a lot of people get those kinds of residual issues is because they're not taking precautions that the label is telling them to. Um, so there was a, she did a talk about it and I was like, oh, dang. And for instance, even, even I'm a beekeeper. Okay. There is so much venom in beekeeping um, uh, bee stings that people actually like, it, it's a very poisonous venom venom therapy it's all it's a very big it's kind of huge actually it's a neurotoxin and there's people that get venom and actually it's, it's very deadly you have to be careful so the point i'm trying to make is you're even told as a beekeeper not to take your clothes into your house and just kind of leave it there because there's people who could be allergic to it and also as you get older sometimes you can get more and more reactions to the bee venom and so you need to wash your clothes regularly. There's just, you just have to kind of know how to take care of yourself. But sadly, sometimes people, like you said, just don't read and don't know, or they just think it's not going to happen to me, but that's, you know, that's sad. But so we just have to try to keep people safe as much as we can and encourage them to read the labels and try to keep them safe. But they're kind of, they need to make their own decisions too. You know, I know everybody's adults and needs to make their own decisions but it's hard when you see people like that gentleman who used a whole can of raid down in the crawl space i mean i don't know what his ventilation's like but that worries me you know worries me so 
I don't know what percentage is, Corey. That's a really good question. I know that um, there's research done like for farmers and like any beekeepers, we care more about our animals than we do ourselves. That's a, that is research-based and we'll even hurt our backs and we'll pick up things too heavy. We'll not use ergonomics because we don't want to waste time figuring that out. And we're thinking about our animals more than we're thinking about our bodies. That happens a lot. So Gwen smiling, have you, uh, I bet you understand that, don't you Gwen, in the farm stuff? I'm always hurting myself. I don't know, I managed to hurt myself doing anything. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so yeah, I agree. Do you have your goats yet? Um, so my last doe that's supposed to be kidding anytime, she hasn't had hers yet. I'm still okay. waiting for her. But the other okay. two, yeah, they're all done. All good, good. The little babies are doing well? Oh yeah, they're awesome. Good. I want to see pictures. Have you put them on Facebook? I think so. I put all kinds of pictures on there. <laughs> you should share um, your Facebook page. Anybody who has Facebook pages for any kind of like, if you have like a farm page or if you share something, you should share your Facebook pages. I think in the chat, that'd be fun. I'll share my um, beekeeping group. I just had a person, I just uh, took out of the beekeeping group. I, I keep this beekeeping group not as a Purdue Extension person. I have to make that disclaimer because I am very ruthless on keeping rude people out of it. Um, and I don't know what Purdue would think about that because it's not always inclusive to rude people. But, but anyways, there was a lady in there who said she was doing a um, survey. And I was like, where's your IRB? Because, you know, I, I just did a survey from my thesis. She's like, I don't have, have an IRB. It's a weird thing she said and I said I don't really trust you and I'm taking you out of this group because I'm protecting my peeps so anyways if you have a Facebook group or something if you share it's fun I think group. we normally have a standard agenda. So some of the chit chat that I got involved in last week, I think threw us over time, or at least I own some of that. But the thing is, I need to know from you later on about opportunity to learn automation. I think you're into that. Tell me, what kind of automation? Well, you talked about WordPress, and then you've talked about, I don't know, there's other things that you're helping people learn how to do so they can do things automatically. I don't know if that's in... Well, I don't, I don't know if I do anything automatic, trust me. Um, but uh, 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 the language is not here, so you're going to have to work with me here. I think that you can look at that computer and make it do things that you want it to do. And I know how to make email work. And I know how to call the geek squad. And that's about hey, that's it. good. That's oh, good. yeah, I, I got it. I can get there. So but there yeah, were some opportunities I, early on you talked about, and I just wanted to figure out what those are because they kind of went by me and I can't seem to get a hold of them in my head. Yeah, no worries. How about this? Um, so I don't know if I've shared this with you guys because sometimes I don't want to overwhelm you, but I'm not allowed, FERPA reasons, I don't share your information with anybody. So I'm not sharing your information with anyone in the association. Um so basically, you have to personally reach out to them in order to get information. And I have to tell you, Lynn Meyer, she is the secretary right now. She sends a lot of emails. So I'm okay with that, but it is what it is. But I send a lot of things and opportunities to her. This is her email address and her name. And I'm putting it in the chat. But she is the person to contact if you want to be on the email list to find out about these kind of classes. Um, so I have been having, like you said, leadership classes. Um, I wish I could automate things. I, I've tried, but um, you actually, it's no automations, but it is PowerPoint and Google and learning how to use those tools um, because Master Gardeners, you guys become community leaders. And for instance, I really want to do calendar using calendars because being able to have a calendar, put a Zoom link on it, not have to ask the person the day of like, what's the Zoom link? I can't find it. I don't know where my email is. Or even like not deleting your email all the time, like maybe knowing where your email is. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people just delete emails. So um, 
we talk about that kind of stuff, but I'm happy to invite you all. You can come anytime, Jackie, if it happens before you graduate, you're invited. And we just have it here. It's very not informal. It's at the extension office and it's kind of like a workshop. You bring your laptop, you don't have to. You could also bring like a tablet and we just kind of walk around and you're working on a project. It, you may not even like the project you're working on, but doing is what causes people to learn. So once you start building a PowerPoint, you think, for instance, let's say you like your fireflies. You start doing a firefly talk, you know, say how the fireflies grow, what they eat, you know, what pollen, what they pollinate, and then put pictures. People love pictures and people love stories. And then you could have that in your back pocket for when people say, I want someone to come talk about pollinators. And I say, Jackie has this really great one about fireflies. fireflies. She has like a 20 minute presentation with great pictures and then they get excited. Does that make sense? So that's what we're doing. Um, I hope that sounds fun, but I'm, you're totally welcome. So I put, okay. I put Lynn's email in there. Um, a couple things real quick. Corey oh said, I don't understand how people don't read their labels. One, I'm not a detailed person. So to me, that's living hell. <laughs> what I do is I connect with people I trust and I ask a ton of questions and connect that way. Now, that was why I enjoyed the presentation last night is he actually showed me the label and what I'm looking for. And now I can experience it a little less overwhelming when I'm out shopping or looking at different things. So that was the way that works for me as opposed to go read the book. The other thing is I did sign up with the secretary and yes, she sends out a boatload of emails I'm just not always sure how to sort through all those back to the source with you. Yes, um, that's a very good question, Jackie, and I haven't figured it out yet um, because the association is not me. That's the thing. The association is its own entity. And but there's also people do use something called the Master Gardener Manager to send out emails. But then I'm like, am I seriously going to send out emails and an association is also going to send out emails? So that's a very confusing place that I haven't found the answer to um, and procedures to. But it's all basically she sends it to me also. And if there was something that was really off tr track, which one time, poor thing, she had been under um, some major surgery and she basically took a she took a picture of her knee that she would just gotten replaced and sent it to BCC. I mean, uh, to reply all. And I was like, you know, this is going to stop. We're not replying all anymore, Lynn. So anyways, if there is something totally inappropriate, I do step in. Um, so, but what she's sending is stuff that it's okay to send, but um, it's not always what I'm sending. It may be coming from other committees in the group, but so I'm right there. I'm not telling her exactly what to send all the time, but and I also haven't really talked to her about how to send things. She just forwards with- Lynn, Lynn is doing fine. I'm not- Yeah, I'm not, okay. I didn't throw her under the bus in any way, shape, or form. I, I just know that like it's, it's a very active process. And I understand it. I told you I can do emails. So I don't have an issue with that. The point I've got to figure out is you're my educator weekly. That's my door to something that is rather large. So that's why I was trying to figure out how to grab a hold where you're at to like get used to the rest. I see. Yes. Call okay. me or email me anytime. Seriously. Will do. So there is a newsletter. Case. She doesn't send the newsletter. It's just going to be on the website four times a year. And that's on the Hancock mga.org that's their website that's wordpress um that they that that was one teresa talked about a couple weeks ago let me see hancock mga.org let me make sure that's it so if we just email her and say we want to be added to the listserv she'll just add us to the listserv yes Hancock County. Find it. Why is it when you're looking for something, I can never write well? I don't it's hancockmga.com. What is it? Hancock what? Mga.com. Hancock MGA? Yeah, dot com. That's what it is. I was saying or. 
Thank you so much. Yes, it's HancockMGA.com. I'm going to put it in the chat. And that's where the newsletters are. They come out. I don't know where they're at. I think it's like, I'm not sure. I guess it says resources. Maybe it's under resources. But it'll come out in a um, after April 1st, four times. So very good questions. Let me know if you have any other questions here. I'm going to go through the quiz here and we'll talk more about what you guys learned and make sure we're all on the same page. Which of the following is a pesticide? This is kind of interesting. When I first started working here, what is a pesticide? What is a pest? Anything that you don't want. That's right. So basically a herbicide is a pesticide, an insecticide is a pesticide, and a fungicide is, an, is a pesticide. So it's all of the above. Does that make sense, guys? Cool. He covered that last night real quickly because he said a pesticide was like a larger umbrella for a number of things and named a couple others that isn't even on this list. Yep, um, there's one called mossicide, like it kills moss. Yeah. Miticides that kills mites. There's all kinds of asides. A uh, larva aside, that's what they use to kill uh, mosquito larva. Um, our health department uses that instead of spraying anymore because spraying actually hurts other insects. Also a PR thing to keep the larva side down and not be spraying. Um, the fogging. So a lot of asides. Um, label these signal words. I love how he talks about this. One being the least on a pesticide label in order of least toxic to most toxic, which I'm always surprised that the Lysol I use for my toilet is like the most toxic. So that's go ahead. because it's corrosive. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Good job. Um, yes. So which one is, we could start the most, which one's the worst, the, the strongest? Danger poison. That's right, danger poison. And it sometimes has a skull and crossbones, mm -hmm. okay? Which one's the least? Caution. That's right, caution. Which one's just above caution? Warning. That's right, warning. And the one just above warning is danger. And then the strongest one is danger poison. Yep. And it's so interesting to start seeing, understanding that and look at your basic household items. And, and it gives you more respect for understanding we're dealing with these chemicals all the time. What is the single most important source of information concerning a particular pesticide? What's, where do you find the most information? On the label? That's right, the label. So even I, if you call me, I'm just gonna pull up the label and read it with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the link, in fact, Today, Kathy called me because someone wanted to use something under her fruit trees to get rid of, um, you know, stuff growing there, but she didn't want to use glyphosate. So she wanted to use something called, um, she had a product name, I can't remember what it was, but it, it only killed grass. It didn't kill broadleaves. And it was not an, it wasn't a glyphosate it wasn't a product that would work for everything and be um, non-specific. And so then she wanted to use something else and it wasn't supposed to be used around fruit trees. And so I said, glyphosate, which one are you gonna use? And it was kills all. And we looked it up and it's okay to use it under fruit trees and you just don't eat the fruit within 21 days. Um, but so I don't know what the lady's gonna do but I, I just read the label. That's all I do, read the label. 
Number four, while serving as a Purdue Extension Master Gardener, appropriate pest control recommendations include, this is on page 545 in your chapter 23. I'm going with A. That's right, that's right. Yep, that's right. And I learned my lesson, definitely stick with Purdue when you're talking about pesticides because states can be different. So even other extension places, just use Purdue extension for pesticides. That's what I've learned. And I think it's the best thing to do. For other things besides pesticides, I go to any extension place in the whole country. Um, but pesticides, I stick with Purdue because every state has different laws and labels. All right, number five, it is very important to take the product label with you to the physician if you accidentally poisoned by a pesticide. Is that true or false? True. True. Yep. Do you ever recommend causing uh, or calling poison control center? The two, 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 or one, two, 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 or whatever it is. I think you should, yes, especially if while you're driving, you know what I mean? I don't know, I would. I hope that never happens, dang. Um, scary, because sometimes, you know, you're probably going to the ER, it depends on how poisoned you are, I guess. I, I'd probably call to let them, let them know and let, let them help you while you're getting to the emergency. I had a uh, residency um, at there at the poison control center, and all I can say is, those people are the smartest people in the world. There's doctors, pharmacists, nurses, everyone there that are just, I mean, they're uber into poisons. It's kind of like um, some of these people that are uber into insects and weeds and other things like that we've been experiencing, like, and they knew everything. That's um, awesome. I felt absolutely just, I don't know, like a surf on there, but they were, they were really impressive. So, I mean, I always recommend them, but I've never used it. Uh, or I've never called them either. So is it really two, 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 like a lot of twos? It's, it's two, 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 one, two, two, two. And okay. they used to have those little sad face poison control stickers everywhere. I'm yeah. not sure why they're not everywhere anymore, but. Um, I remember him, Mr. Yuck. Yeah, Mr. Yuck. And they have them everywhere, but um, they have so much data and resources there that, you'd be surprised that somebody hasn't chugged whatever or got it in there, whatever, and they have everything, so. Looks like Mr. Yuck's still around. But I, like you said, I haven't heard about it a lot. We can request a free sheet of Mr. Yuck stickers. We should totally do that. <laughs> You're so cute. I remember Mr. Yuck, it was, a, it was a long time ago. I didn't know, see, is it 800, 1-800? Yeah, that's at 1-800-222-1222. And I think the main place is in Indianapolis. Okay, cool. Well, at cool. least the Indiana Poison Control Center probably goes to the local one. I don't know. It's just downtown. I'm going to chat, send you guys chat so you can see it. Um, I'm sure they see so much so that I'm sure they have a lot of experience. That's cool that you had a residency there. Thanks for sharing that with us. You know, and what's sad, I'm in a cleaning group um, for homemakers. I mean, could be anybody in the cleaning group, obviously. But you know what lots of times happens is mixing chemicals. Like, don't mix your chemicals. Like, if you think you have bleach and then you put something else in there, you could kill yourself. And you're just trying to clean your shower. That is a horrible way to die. I mean, I would just rather have a dirty shower. So just be careful because that's how a lot of people get hurt at home doing that kind of stuff, working too hard and then mixing chemicals on accident. All right, list four PPE items you should wear as the very minimum when applying pesticides. We kind of talked about this earlier. What is the very minimum? Gloves. Gloves, yes. Basically, we don't want skin to show. We don't want skin showing. Long sleeves. That's right.
probably long, long pants. What else? What about your eyes? Eye protection, yeah. Does anybody like their eyes? Yes. I like my eyes. And they're not even the greatest eyes, but I wouldn't want them to get messed up even worse. So eye protections. <laughs> eye protection. Is there something I'm missing? Feet. Shoes. Socks, long, long socks. Yes. Nice. Is there a, he, he was also showing some gloves that looked like they were pretty decent. They were good for chemicals. Do you know what those were or yes. could be? I think they're called polypropylene gloves. Um, I sure, 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 yeah. The, is that what they are, Corey? Yeah, he was showing different ones, but there's just some like your, your rubber ones that you use for like a doctor's office. And then there's the more durable ones that you have that you can wash and reuse. Yes. Well, the thing that he showed was some of, looks like they're like, the doctor's office ones that still didn't let the chemicals go through. Is that the same as the doctor's office? Because those right. black things there are hard to use because I can't yes, right. maneuver Actually, in that. Your your uh, label will tell you the type of gloves. Like if you're able to use nitrile gloves or nitrile, you know, you can buy that at Home Depot. It'll say if you can. Okay. Home Depot has like big packages of them. And um, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Okay, let's see what else. A pest, we talked about this. What is a pest? It's basically anything that's anywhere you don't want it to be. So what in here could be a pest? All of them. That's right. Oh, I want to say up here, they have a little blurb. These products, basically when you're dealing with things that need PPEs, these products are those in which the EPA assigns this designation because of its relatively high potential to cause human or environmental harm. Only the Office of the Indiana State Chemist licensed pesticide applicators may purchase and apply these products. That's when they're the um, restricted use. I'm pretty sure that's what he's talking about. So you still have to use, when you're using home, um, like glyphosate, you still need to use PPE, but there's also restricted use pesticides that um, applicators actually have to get a license for, and they have to keep up on their credentials every five years. They need three credits. And um, so they're always getting trained to stay safe. All right, number eight, who determines whether someone's a pest or not? Is it me? Is it a master gardener? Is it a publication or is it the person with the problem? Person with the problem. That's right. Your dog agrees. A pesticide is always involved in solving a landscape pest problem. True or false? Sounds like he yesterday explained that there's other options sometimes. So it is false. False. That's right. Following the directions on a pesticide label is left to the discretion of the user. Sorry, I made it a little biased, didn't I, Vicky? Well, that's true, but <laughs> well, they, you're, not, you're not supposed to. That's right. Good point. Yes. Good point, Vicki. Yes. That's a, one of those sneaky ones. Oh, did you see that his, um, he said that question last week was wrong? Stupid question that we were like, I was like, well, I'm not a lawyer. I guess obviously I don't understand this. Well, it was wrong. Did you guys see that? Number nine, it was the number nine question. We'll talk yep. about that in a second if you have any questions. The use of pesticides in the landscape is detrimental to all wildlife, true or false? False. False. Pesticides are one of many tools that can be used in the landscape to protect plants against insects, weeds, and diseases. True. True. Okay, anybody have any questions about this quiz? Anybody have any questions about pesticides? Okay. Let me look at that question we talked about last week on our Facebook page. I think I shared it. If I didn't, I meant to. 
I think you emailed it. Did I? Question number nine on animal pests is not a good question. The answer is incorrect on the key and we need to rewrite this question. We had an issue with this last spring. I just forgot about it. My apologies. I'll make a note on the participants webpage and on the quiz key for participants. So hopefully you guys saw that when you went to go look at your quiz keys. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions or anything about pesticides? Because Teresa's joining us again, and she's going to talk about 4-H, 4-Hers and what you're working on, Teresa. But Teresa, guess what? I showed everybody your kiosk and your awesome work with Bobby. It's so cute. Awesome. Thank you. I'm excited to have it up. And Bobby didn't blow away, but it was close. It was a close call. <laughs> I heard that she was fighting that wind out there. It's kind of crazy out there. It's it's blustery. Yeah. 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 Do you want to share, Teresa? Sure. Um, do you want... Was everybody here last time? Do I need to introduce myself and talk about me? I think or... everybody was here, but okay. If you if you want to show your face, we'd love to see your face. But oh no no, no 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 no, you don't want to see my face. <laughs> okay, got it. I'll be quiet now. Um, here I'll show you my dog. That way you can see the dog, because he's always with me. Oh, there's my face. There's the dog. Which dog is it? That's Foster. Oh, he's uh, he, he's resting. He's always by Mama. Yeah. Um. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about um the 4-H. Uh, we have we we kind of I think you guys heard from Bob last week maybe on the Youth Education Committee. Yes, Bob. Um, yes. So that was that's kind of. He and I are kind of co-chairs. He's he's actually the chair, but um, we have the the 4-H has a junior master gardener project. So we are. Um, I am kind of the leader. I'm the liaison between the 4-H and the um, master gardeners. As a matter of fact, I was filling out the financial records for the 4-H club from last year earlier. So. Um, I just we just work on ways to um, help the kids. Um, the requirements for junior master gardeners are pretty easy. Um, they basically have to attend, I think, four meetings and do three projects and and do some community service. So we're putting together um, the community service op options for them. One of them is, and I hope Lace has encouraged everybody to come to the plant sale or order. Uh-oh, I see your face, girl. I think I did it once. I don't think I told them again. We should tell them in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, um, plant sale so they can come to the plant sale and help. Um, they are, We have a cabin. Actually, the Junior Master Gardeners doesn't have a cabin, but the fairgrounds has a, an old cabin and and around the cabin, there is um, a pollinator patch that we are going to plant. We worked on it yesterday uh, or last year, sorry. Um, so, so we have that. And then we also, there's three signs along the fairgrounds um, that have flower beds support around them. Um, they they are also something that the junior master gardeners takes care of. So we have lots of opportunities to help out um, and do community service. We're also, there's a blind lady in Greenfield who has contacted us for a couple years now. And um, we take the group out there and talk to them about how to care for landscape plants, you know, putting to bed for the winter, cleaning up for the spring, um, what you trim, what you don't trim, yard composting, that kind of stuff. So it's a good educational opportunity for the kids. Um, so far this uh, year, we've done just a couple. We've had um, water filtering, uh, creating your own water filter. We're working on composting for the next um, session. And then um, there's one more thing we've had and it's totally escaping me. Um, oh, I know we planted seeds in, in, in trays and the kids had so much fun, one planting and two watching the stuff come up. I keep getting pictures from the kids. So that's really great news. Um, one of the things I wanted to let you guys know is, um, Lace, you're going to have to correct me. I think this is the way that 
Roy did it, but I want to make sure it's the way you do it too. If the, if the interns come and help us on anything like the plant sale, um, as long as they're with a master gardener, once they get their, once they complete their test, they can retroactively add those hours, can't they? Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you guys want to come to the plant sale or uh, we're really looking for more people, we have big, well, I think you probably heard from Bob, we have big plans for um, uh, the youth education in Hancock County. So if you guys are interested in that at all, uh, please let us know and we would be happy to add you to our list so you'll get the information of uh, when we're doing things and what's going on. Uh, one of the things we are working on is a, is a summer camp for the kids. This would be the first time we've done this. So it'd be like how many ever four, six weeks would we decide to do? And the kids would come for a part of the day and probably to the extension grounds, but we're not sure. And, and, and do activities related to gardening. So we're looking excitedly at that. So any questions on that? Okay, no questions. Are they are they question askers, Lace? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, now, have you guys talked very much about pollinators? Because I can talk about pollinators, but I don't have to. I would love you to talk about pollinators. We've talked a little bit about them. I know okay. that Corey has a, a way station. Awesome. And, but, and I, Gwen, you have some milkweed, right? That you're growing. Yeah. And I think who else, who else is into pollinators around here? Jackie loves fireflies. She has a lot of fireflies at her place. Oh, cool. Yep. Okay. Well, um, actually one, I knew nothing about pollinators when I started my master gardener class and I just kind of completely fell in love with the whole idea. I, I think it is a vital, not necessarily a recommended, but a vital part of our I don't want to say continued survival, but some people go that far, okay, and say our continued survival on this earth, because two out of every three things that you eat need a pollinator to, sur to survive. They will not grow if they do not have a pollinator. So pollinators are very important. Um, so we have um, several acres here in our our, actually our yard is even several acres. So we have transferred some of that grass into um, patches of wildflowers that uh, grow every year. Um, they are easy to maintain and they have cut back on the mowing that we do. And we would like to put another one in yet. Um, we're kind of choosing the place and waiting for the right time. But um, if anybody has any interest in doing that, um, please let me know. I have a, a presentation that you can see. Um, the other thing is it doesn't have to be a great big patch. It can be a container of uh, milkweed. It can be a container of any, any, any pollinator. And I would recommend natives, but like bee balm or, oh boy, there's so many of them out there. Um, even black eyed Susans, cone flowers, all of those, any, anything um, that I, I would recommend, if nothing else, just a container of something that you could go just so our pollinators have the food and the area that they need. That's one thing I'm going to just go on. Sorry. <laughs> one thing that I found very funny, and I've actually taught people since then, uh, since I've learned all of this is the pollinator patches, you want those to be, I don't know if you guys have been to the extension office, but along the west wall, uh, west fence, it's kind of looks kind of scraggly. Well, that's because all those pollinator plants have been allowed to sit there over the winter and um, be, be a place for the insects to bury during the winter and, and a place for them to lay their eggs. So um, it, it's important that it's just about to the time where we start to um, prepare it for spring. So we'll either mow it down or we'll burn our patches one or the other. Um, but it's easy to, it's easy to maintain once you get, once you get a couple years in, it's, it's really, um, 
it's really super uh, and and very important and, and i've told lace this too not only are the insects there but we're seeing more birds and other animals we it was uh just i think in the middle of the winter it was like december or january or something and I looked outside and there was a bird diving into the pollinator patch. I'm like, ah, oh, he's getting dinner, you know? So really it, it's, it's whole, it's a vital part of the cycle that's going away. And, and some people, and I happen to be one of them are really into get, trying to get the pollinators back um, as much as we can. So that's awesome. thank you, Teresa. And also sometimes depending on your size of your plot, Mm -hmm. The NRCS actually, um, I think if you have an acre or half acre, I'm not sure what it is in Hancock County, they will um, do a cost okay. share with you, right, yep. Teresa? Yeah, yes. that's correct. For I think a quarter or a half, I don't remember now because it's been a few years, of the seed that we put down. So, I mean, any bit is nice. <laughs> yes, exactly. So. And I wanted to share, um, actually, you're talking about Heather Holm. She actually writes great books and she has a website um, that I just looked it up like this, Heather Holm Pollinators. And she has the information about her books and also plant lists and posters. And this is where I found this information, but this is a great little information about stem nesting bees that Teresa was just talking about. Pollinator patches aren't just for the spring and summer when they're eating, but it's also for these little native bees to have a place to live over the winter. That's where they live in the, some of these native bees live in these stems. They overwinter as larva. So just basically it's really cute. I also want to share, I don't think I've ever shared this even with master gardeners in China they had so much issues with pesticide and this is from bee culture the american beekeeping that they have to do a lot of hand pollination and i don't know about you but i don't want to ever have to hand pollinate apples uh yeah this lady right here has all these stamens from a main pollinator flower and she's basically preparing to hand pollinate and then they have farmers who climb up in this these trees in the orchard and he used these little feather almost like dusters and he's doing hand pollination um wow. that's a lot of work so i don't know i'm just thankful for our native pollinators and i hope that we never get to this point that has happened in china absolutely yeah that's very interesting thanks for sharing that lace yeah i guess i never shared that i'll share i'll share the link with you guys if you want to read okay. it maybe you can put it on the master gardener website too maybe or yeah. whoever uh, just because or the uh, Facebook page just because that's really I mean that that gives you a lot of insight about what would happen if we lost lost them that's a good point yeah so, and maybe I could share this link to Heather Holmes yes, she's got yes. a lot of cool stuff so anyways thank you so much for sharing Teresa I'm glad that sure. you found that pollinators are something that you love and are interesting to you and Tell how you started your pollinator patch and what you learned about. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. So um, when we started our pollinator patch, I I, I did some research, um, and that the first thing I read told me that the ground needed to be tilled and dirt exposed for um, for the seeds to grow. So I spent hours and hours and hours rototilling behind the barn where our first. Uh, pollinator patches which is really not existent anymore and you'll find that out because um you'll find that's because rototilling all it did was bring up weed seeds so you know all there's a, a seed bank in the soil and the weed seeds just came up like crazy I had a terrible trouble it ended up choking out most of the flowers that we planted. So there's a few cone flowers back there and something else I don't remember, mostly cone flowers. Um, so that's a that's our failure. Um, the next couple ones we did, we did not um, do tilling. We did one using solarization, which is plastic over the grass. So it kills the grass. Then we raked it off then we seeded it. And when you seed it, you mix half sand and half of your, and seed, mix it in a one-to-one -one proportion. And then 
you basically sprinkle it all over your area and then you can use a roller or you can use your feet or you can use tractor tires or quad tires or mower tires or whatever and so just um just press them down into the soil you, you don't have to bury them and then um water it so we would um take our tractor out and put the rain barrel up high and use gravity to water uh the the patch because it's a quarter mile away from our house so so that one was kind of interesting that one probably has turned out to be our best one the next one we tried behind the greenhouse um we used glyphosate and we didn't we should have done it more than once or maybe even more than twice and we didn't so there's some grassy areas in there so that one's not um our best and I don't think we've still got some good parts but we we need to treat it a little bit more so I would say out of the three experiments that we did here at our house do the solarization <laughs> it's probably the easiest I think the hardest thing is keep, actually keeping the um plastic down we ended up dragging a whole bunch of rocks out there to keep it down so. Thanks for sharing, Teresa. So you've sure. learned a lot with doing those three pollinator patches and you're thinking about doing another one, you said? Yeah, yeah, we want to do one in the yard. It gets a little um, damp down just on the other side of the creek or on this side of the creek, but a little ways away from it. So we thought maybe by planting some pollinators similar to what Lace did with her rain garden, um, the plant material would soak up a little more water and we wouldn't have a wet spot. Yep, that's true. So... I put your email in there. So if they have any okay. questions about anything okay. you said, does that that's sound perfect. good, Teresa? Yeah, that's great. Thanks guys. It's always fun seeing you. I hope that I don't overwhelm you too much, but I love talking about this stuff. Call me anytime if you have questions and you can bring your uh, soil samples in by Monday. How's that sound? All right, take care of yourselves. Stay Thanks, safe guys. out there. Bye. Bye. Bye.